show of hands, how many people have not seen me before? Honestly, interactive today, guys, come on. Okay, you guys don't even try to take notes. He said earlier I had 80 slides, that's about half what I have. I got 163 slides to do in 40 minutes. So you're not gonna be able to keep up. You wanna do this, except it's cutting off the edge. But bit.ly, bit.ly slash kane seo 2016. The slides are up live. You can just download the slides, use those as your notes. And today we're doing the Fast and Furious Guide to Local SEO. I run the SEO and social media department for Dealeron. I started there about a year and a half ago. We were just me a year and a half ago when they started selling SEO. We now have a team of 24 people in the Dallas office doing SEO. And my partner, the hair over there, he and I do a Wednesday video series called the Wednesday Workshop. So go check those out on our blog. Every Wednesday you can come and get free tips from our video series. It's SEO stuff, PPC stuff dealership marketing stuff in general, website stuff. So it's free information, you don't have to fill out a lead form, it's just there to be cool, and they're usually pretty darn goofy, so it's a fun thing to do as well. And also, I speak literally all over the world. Uh, one of the reasons they hired me is because I am really involved in the SEO community. I speak at a lot of SEO conferences, and I see a lot of really bad speakers. I see people that, in the SEO world, it's you know super nerds, it's the first time they've left their cubicle in like six months, and the background of their slide is just white, and it's just black text and it's a bunch of bullet points and they literally stand behind the podium on the stage with their back to the audience just reading their slides and that's a really crappy experience for the people that pay to attend a conference so I'm a firm believer in the fact that bullet points kill kittens so there will be no bullet points in today's presentation and as he mentioned uh, we do have a movie theme today I was a film major in college I'm working on a full sleeve of movie portrait tattoos I'm ridiculously obsessed with movies. Every time I do a presentation, there is a theme. Last year, what did I do last year, David? It was comedy, I think, last year. So I did comedy movies last year. This time, it's car movies. So it's any movie where a car features as a significant plot point in the movie. Typically, I will do one movie for every year in the last 50 years, but this time, I went back the last 54 years so that I could include every single James Bond movie. And so I did car movies uh, last fall at a conference in the UK and I did this whole setup and I said the whole, you know, went back extra time for James Bond and they all kind of looked at me and I said, I'm not pandering to a British audience. I'm really obsessed with James Bond. I've got him tattooed on my arm and that like was the best joke ever and they love me now. They thought it was funny. But for those of you that are younger and don't get some of the old references, I do have attribution down in the corner, but it's kind of cutting off the edge. So you can download the deck later and see it. So are we all pumped? Yeah. Is everybody ready? Why the long face? Are you guys spending too much time looking up at your competitors that are ranking higher than you? Are you wondering, dude, where's my site? Are you barely hanging on to your rankings for dear life? Or maybe you're even getting murdered by your competitors. Today, I'm gonna give you guys a peek underneath the hood of Google so that you can understand how things work so you can get your sites to show up better. And I've got a lot of tips that are for your eyes only. Nobody's laughing at that. That's like the best joke in the whole thing. That's for your eyes only. That's a James Bond joke. Come on, guys. So I'm going to show you guys how to jump out and grab attention. And just like a fat guy in a little coat, I'm going to squeeze in a boatload of tips for you guys today. So again, we're interactive. I want to see a show of hands. How many people in here still want to be number one in Google? Right? Everybody that didn't put your hand up is lying. All right? Let's look at what number one really looks at, though. You guys see number one? That's first page of results. Number one's down here somewhere, right? Let's look on mobile, because most of your traffic comes from mobile. You usually have to scroll down through three or four screens before you get to the first organic result. Number one is not what it used to be. Every time you do a search, Google is going to change your results for you based on the history of the device that you're on, whether you're logged into Google or not. Google's also going to change your results based on your physical location, and Google knows where you are by your IP address on your desktop or by your location chip in your phone or by triangulation of the cell signals. So between personalization and localization, every single person will see different search results, and that's why rank tracking is not a viable judge of how well you're doing on your SEO. So instead of going after rankings, you need to go after visibility. You need to be as visible as possible for as many possible different searches that might ever occur in the history of ever. Now, everybody spends tons of money on third-party leads. 
You spend tons of money on AutoTrader. You spend tons of money on cars.com, CarGurus. You spend boatloads of money on AdWords. Why is nobody spending money on SEO? The biggest source of traffic to your website, unless you're doing something wrong or unless you have really deep pockets and spend a crap ton of money on AdWords, the biggest source of traffic is organic search traffic. You get more leads from organic than you get from everywhere else. Why would you not invest money to get more out of that? Now, for those of you that haven't seen me before, there's actually two kinds of SEO. When you're talking about SEO, you're talking about traditional SEO. That's manipulating signals both on and off a site to influence how that site shows up when somebody searches a set of keywords. But there is a separate algorithm. When you're doing local searches, you get different results. So the local algorithm is gonna do the same thing, but there are additional signals involved. And when you're doing local SEO, you're only targeting a specific geographic area. Now, the best way to explain this, something we do on the phone all the time, and I tell this to people at SEO conferences all over the world. When you're talking to somebody trying to explain how it works, tell them to use pizza delivery. If you guys were at the dealership and you were at your computer, you type two words into Google, pizza delivery. You get a list of pizza delivery spots that are right there next to the dealership. Go home that night, type the exact same thing into Google, two words, pizza delivery, and the results are 100% different. Now in traditional SEO, that wouldn't happen. Your results are gonna be fairly close to the same thing other than the personalization aspect. But with local results, totally different. That shows you how Google understands that the intent of your search is to find something local even though you didn't enter a city into your search query. Now if you go to Search Engine Land, I write a monthly column on Search Engine Land. Uh, a lot of these will have links to articles that I wrote so you can get more in-depth information. So there's an article that kind of really explains this more, bit.ly slash local dash SEO dash pizza. For those of you that are writing notes, make sure you write all these links in lowercase because they're case sensitive. Now once you've explained that, this is a tool that I use because a lot of times I'm talking to like the internet guy or the sales manager and they've got to go back to the owner and say, look, we just saw this really cool dude with a beard and a bunch of tattoos and he said we need to do this stuff and the owner's like, I don't care. Use this example. This is a really simple math equation that very clearly illustrates the absolute need for a dealership to be using local SEO. And I actually have a video for this one, so go to bit.ly slash SEO dash simple dash math. Not gonna explain it here because we don't have time because I gotta do like another 100,000 slides in the next 20 minutes. But go watch this video, it's awesome. Now, the best thing that you can do for your dealership is to do local SEO. Doing some SEO will work, so there's lots of providers out there. There's other providers in automotive. There's the mom and pop guys up the street from you in your city. Doing SEO works and you're gonna get some benefits out of it, but the best thing that you can do is find someone that specializes in local SEO so that they're gonna include all of the additional signals that will matter more. And like I said, those additional signals make it more complicated. A lot of people say that they do SEO and they might mention local, but they don't really understand it and they don't really do it. And I don't, is Amir in here? I don't see him in here. The owners of Dealeron really hate when I do these slides. The best thing you guys can do as a dealership is to have somebody on your own staff internally doing SEO. Don't hire me. Don't hire some other provider. Hire somebody full-time in-house to do this. And this is not your internet manager where you're like, hey man, go do some SEO stuff too. This is a full-time gig. We're talking 60, 70,000 plus a year for this person to do this. That's the best thing you can do for your dealership. If you guys can't commit to doing that, then you definitely need to go hire an SEO provider. And remember, $60,000, $70,000 in-house, equate that to somebody out. It's not cheap. You cannot automate SEO. You can't get SEO for 500 bucks a month, period. If you're paying 500 bucks a month to the mom and pop guy at the street, you're just giving them 500 bucks a month until you realize they're not doing anything for you. SEO is butts and seats, doing work, that costs money. That salary means you have to pay more money for SEO if you want results. And remember, it is a marathon, not a sprint. AdWords is great. AdWords works. AdWords is immediate. SEO is not. Organic search takes time. Anybody that tells you that if you're a site that's not ranking well, anyone that tells you they can get you to the first page in less than six to eight months is lying to you just to get your money. You're not doing SEO in a bubble. Other people are doing. Everybody in this room is doing at least some little bit of SEO, whether they're actively doing SEO or they're just doing the natural things they do with their website. So it's not like you're in a bubble and you can do the things and boom, you're number one because everybody else is fighting for that too. It's king of the hill. So there's a video for this too, bit.ly slash SEO dash timeline. Go watch that one. And we talk to dealers all the time and I talk to people all over the world outside of automotive and they're like, yeah, you know, my SEO guy, he's good enough. 
but we just said a couple slides ago, this is your biggest source of traffic, your biggest source of leads. Do you really want to be complacent with somebody that's good enough? No. You need an effing badass doing your SEO. And you got to watch out for the shady providers. So I'm going to give you some tactics here that will help you spot the shady guys. And also, if you're going to hire someone in-house or you already have someone in-house, this will help you vet those people to understand if the work that they're doing is really being effective for you or not. Crappy duplicated content is very, very prevalent. It's very bad for you. So here's an example of this. Now, this is someone that's in automotive. We're not going to mention names, but this is an article about Hyundai Accent AC repair. And they'll take the exact same article and do Hyundai Elantra AC repair. And every single model in the lineup, and all they do is change the model name. But it's also in, I blacked it out, I don't remember what, but it's like, let's say it's Dallas, Texas. They'll do it for like 25 surrounding cities as well with that whole block. So you have the same article like 150 times on the site. That is not valuable for you guys. That's duplicate content. That could actually hurt you. So the way you check this is you find a sentence that does not have your dealership name, does not have the brand that you sell, and does not have your city. So it doesn't have to be a full sentence, but it needs to be more than just a few words. You highlight it like that. Then you go to Google, and you do a Google search inside of double quotes. If you just search in Google without the double quotes, it's approximate results. If you put the double quotes, it only shows exact matches. Any guesses on how many times this showed up in Google? For an interactive crowd, you guys are really not helping me out today. 42,000 times. 42,000 times that article showed up online. If you're paying this guy for SEO, are you paying him for good work? No. Second one, clearly outdated SEO tactics. Now this one's a little harder because you have to stay up to date with what works, but you can read our blog, you can go to search engine land, you can go to Moz, there's a lot of places out there where you can see what the current best practices are. So when something comes in that's really, really out of date, it's still pretty easy to spot. So this is a request that came in to Dileron's support department. This is somebody who was using an outside local third party SEO agency. So right here, this is, what they, whoa, this is what they asked for us to put on their site. Now this first one is the title tag. That's what shows up up above your URL. It is the most weighted, most important SEO element on the page. First thing they asked was put the dealership name first. You should never ever in a million years put your dealership name first in your title tag because you're the only dealership named that. So you're gonna rank number one for anybody searching for your dealership name, whether you put it there or not. Don't waste the most valuable spot on your entire website by putting your dealership name. Second, they put the phone number. If somebody knows your phone number, they're just gonna stink and call you. They're not gonna go do a Google search to see what that phone number goes and then call you. So again, wasted space. Then they have, you know, whatever dealer, I think it was a Honda dealer, Palo Alto, San Jose, Fremont, California. No one is going to sit down and say, I want to find a Honda dealer in San Jose, Palo Alto, Fremont. They're gonna use one city. So again, wasted space. Second big mistake, meta description. This is what populates those two gray sentences underneath your blue link when you show up in Google. It needs to be like AdWords copy. It needs to be compelling text that makes people want to click through to your site. It's just a big bunch of words. And a big bunch of cities, it's completely not even English. Right? Complete waste. Third big mistake, meta keywords. Meta keywords stopped working eight years ago. Google and every search engine has been very vocal about the fact that eight years ago they stopped paying attention to this. Why are they wasting time? Even worse, this is what they wanted on the home page. Two sentences and then a bullet point list. Do you guys think that you're going to show up in 20 different cities because you put them in a bullet point list on your home page? If you do, come talk to me because you got a problem. That stuff doesn't work. You will never show up. It never worked ever and it definitely doesn't work now. And then, hey, let's list out all of our models by bullet point. There's no links there. It's just, hey, here's a bullet point list of the models we sell. Guess what? You're a Honda dealer. Your customers know you sell those cars, right? Even worse, right up in here, they had a read more link. So the only thing you would see on the home page was those two crappy sentences. Google has very publicly said that if the text is not visible to a human when the page loads, it is devalued. So in other words, if the text isn't visible when your site loads, it doesn't count for SEO. So none of this would have counted anyway, even though it was crappy, it wouldn't have mattered. So if you have anything on your home page that says read more and you have to click it to either pop something up in a window or expand the window to see what else is there, that's really bad. So run away from this stuff. Then if all you're getting is model research pages, model research pages are great. They're very early funnel searches, so they're not going to convert really well, but it'll bring you a ton of traffic, get a lot of eyeballs on your site. They're awesome for SEO, but if that's all you're getting, you're buying content, you're not buying SEO. Or if your SEO company is just writing blog posts for you. Again, very important for SEO, integral part of the pie. 
But if that's all you're getting, you're buying content, you're not buying SEO. Or here's another good one. There's SEO providers that read the blog post put out by people like me on Search Engine Land that says that Google likes fresh content. So they say, guess what? We're gonna give you 20 pages of content a month on your site, not counting your blog. On your actual website, 20 pages of content. Okay, for everyone in this room, outside of your blog and outside of your VDPs and your search pages, you may need anywhere between 20 to 30 pages of content on your site. If you've got somebody that's really good at SEO and gets really advanced, maybe it's in the range of 50 to 55 pages. This company at the end of the year is gonna add 240 pages to your menu with no strategy other than Google likes fresh content, right? Not valuable, run away. Artificially lowered bounce rate's really scary too. The SEO company or the website company says, hey, switch to us and you're gonna magically have a 5% or less bounce rate. The way bounce rate works, you land on a page, Google Analytics starts a timer. And that timer runs until I do something else that Google Analytics can track. So let's say I put up a really awesome model research page for you. It's about the new F-150 and it's got some really kick-ass videos from Ford and some really kick-ass videos that you made at the dealership and cool pictures and tons of information and I land on this page and I'm there for like 10 minutes and I'm like, this truck's so kick-ass, I gotta have it. And I call you up and I'm like, I wanna come for a test drive, I want this truck and you're like, sweet, come on down. And I'm like, cool, click. And then I go back to Facebook. I was on that page for 10 minutes and I called and converted and I'm coming to buy that car but Google Analytics says I spent zero time on site and that I'm a bounce. So what these guys do is they run a script that just fires off an event to Google Analytics every two seconds. So sure, your bounce rate goes from 45% down to 5%. Did they fix anything? No, they just changed how the report works. That's scary stuff. Or a la carte services. If you go to your SEO provider and they're like, here's all the stuff that we offer, custom pick your own services and make your own package. You're going to them because they're the expert. They should tell you what you need. They shouldn't expect that you have the knowledge to understand what's important to get your dealership to show up better. Guaranteed ranking, run away from that stuff. Nobody can guarantee rankings and rankings as a metric for success don't even matter anymore. Anyway, guaranteed links is really scary. Links are important, but if they're guaranteeing you links, they're getting you crappy links and that's gonna get you in trouble down the road. If you're not getting a report from the people that you're spending thousands of dollars a month on SEO from, why are you paying thousand dollars a month? I talked to somebody last year that had gone six months paying $4,000 a month to their provider and not even talk to the guy. That is really, really, really ignorant behavior. Don't do that, don't be ignorant. Be smart, hold your provider or your person in-house accountable. Get reports to prove that, that what they're doing is working. And the report, if it comes to you and it's just, here's all the keywords you rank for, again, we don't care, that doesn't mean anything. I could get you ranked for 5,000 keywords, but they'd be keywords that no human would ever search and you're not gonna get any more traffic, so who cares? The reports need to show what matters. Organic traffic increasing over time and leads increasing over time. Your SEO report could be one page with two numbers on it and that's all you really need. So the guy in house that you have working on your SEO, he needs to be going to conferences. I'm not talking digital dealer, I'm not talking NADA, I'm talking stuff like MozCon, PubCon, SMX. I just got, I just got here last night from a conference in Dallas called State of Search. You have to send this person to a dyed in the wool SEO conference where it's two or three days of really intensive, this is the current best practice for SEO. And if you're using a provider, ask your provider which conferences they're sending their team to. Because if they're not sending them to team, if they're not sending their team members to conferences, they're using outdated tactics and that's bad for you. Google is always updating the search results. Google wants the search results to be better so that you will stay on Google because if the search results suck on organic, you're not gonna use Google anymore. And then Google loses money because you're not clicking on AdWords. But because Google's trying to make these search results better, it's always changing the algorithm, which makes our job as SEOs a lot harder because we have to stay up to date. Every time they make an update, you have to change your strategy. I'm gonna run through these really quick because I've only got about 20 minutes left. The first major update that required a massive strategy change was Panda, this was in 2013. Before this, you could just say, hey, we sell warranties, call us for more info, and you'd rank for warranties because you had it on there. Google realized that's not a very good customer experience, so now you have to have robust content. It has to be unique, it has to be useful. So this made you completely change the way that you wrote content on your site. Then we had the Penguin update. It used to be a numbers game. Whoever had the most links pointed at their site was gonna win. Now it matters where those links come from because Google realized that's not really the best tactic ever. Really quickly, funny story about this. Two months, three months after this update rolled out, had a dealership in New Jersey call us up. 
Say, we used to be number one in our town. There's only five dealerships in our city. Now we don't show up at all. We don't know what's up. We went and checked their links. Most dealers are gonna have maybe 100 links if they've got a really good SEO, maybe a couple hundred. This guy had 6,500 links pointed at his website and 6,400 were from Russian porn sites. This guy was using a very major automotive SEO provider. But you know what? Three months ago before the Google rolled this update out, that was a totally viable strategy. Go to Fiverr and buy a crap ton of links and that guy's gonna win. The problem is now he has all these links and Google makes an update and this guy was not in Google search results for an entire year until we got him fixed. And it took us a year to get him out. This stuff is really scary, you gotta be careful. And then the Hummingbird update. This was not a penalty based update, this was an entire engine change. Before Google's matching keyword to keyword, now Google is understanding language and semantics. For those of you that have Android phones, if you use Google now and speak to your phone, this is what allows that to happen. So Google now understands, and I did this, I was in Paris with my wife last year, standing directly underneath the Eiffel Tower. You could talk to your phone and say, how tall is it? Well, Google knows where you're standing. It says, wow, you're standing right under the Eiffel Tower. Obviously, it refers to the Eiffel Tower, and it starts telling you how tall the Eiffel Tower is. It also allows chains of queries. So you can say, Google, where is the Statue of Liberty? It'll tell you it's in the harbor in New York. And then you can say, how tall is it? And it understands that it refers back to the previous query. That's Hummingbird. Because of that, your conversational or your, your content has to be much more conversational in tone. You can't use car dealer, car dealer, car dealer, car dealer, car dealer, car dealer, car dealer. You have to change it up. You have to be conversational. Then we had the pigeon update that drastically changed the way that Google calculated local search results and actually reduced the visibility. The radius of the local search results that would show in those map packs is about 60% of the size that it was before this update. Then we had the update to Google My Business Quality Guidelines, what a lot of you probably still call Google Places, where Google said, hey, you can do this stuff, but then this update came out and said, guess what, now you can't do that stuff or you get penalized. Then we lost the seven pack. Those of you that have been in the game for a while are gonna remember, you used to do a search and you'd get seven results, and then you'd get the numbers right here, phone numbers, you could get calls without anybody ever going to your website. It was beautiful, nice address, it's all clearly delineated to the side, but Google's taking a mobile first approach, which all of you should too. Now that doesn't mean Google says, let's do this and see what it looks like on mobile. Google says, let's do it on mobile and then make desktop work based on mobile. That doesn't fit on mobile. So Google switches to a three pack. So now you've got four people that used to be on page one that aren't there anymore. Now it's three results and the phone number's been moved up underneath and the address is moved up underneath. So you, it's not as clearly visible. So there's a little bit less than what you used to have. And then before, you'd click on the listing and it would go to your Google Places page. Now you click on the listing, it goes to the Finder page. But this is an opportunity for you guys because let's say that you're one of these guys and you're down here. When it switched to this a year ago, you lost out. But now, this is very, very heavily based on proximity. So this is most of the time gonna be the three closest results based on that search query to the person doing the search. Let's say you're the fourth or fifth closest. So you're still gonna show up on this list if they click through, but let's say they click on this guy and he's got a 3.6 rating and we get over here to you and you're a 4.7 and you've got twice as many reviews. You can be stealing clicks from your competitors. So it's really important to go after a good review strategy. Then we lost the location setting. Those of you in a group setting, you could be at group headquarters and say, I wanna do a search for a Toyota dealer and set the location to Atlanta or set the location to Lexington or set the location to Destin, Florida. And it would show that, you can't do that anymore. So it's a little bit harder to see how the competitive landscape looks in different cities. Then we lost the right rail for PPC, got the additional ad up top, which pushed organic results even further down the page. Then now we've got paid ads in that local finder page. So once you click on one of those three, it goes over and the top one is a paid ad. So talk to your SEM guy because that's an opportunity for you to buy into something, again, that you may not be close proximity wise, but now you can buy into it. And then very soon we're gonna have ads in the three pack. Now this is an artist rendering from search engine land. Everybody freaked out at the beginning and thought we were gonna even lose another organic, but what we do now know is it's still gonna be three results, but the top result, there will be a fourth result that will be a paid ad. Again, huge opportunity for you guys and a change in strategy. So how are you guys supposed to know what to do to optimize your site? Google doesn't really tell you, hey, here's the list of what to do. This, you wanna do well in Google? Go do this stuff. Google doesn't tell you that. Google wants you to be there because you deserve to be there, not because you're following some checklist. Moz, well actually a guy named David Mim who works at Moz, every year will take the top 40 people worldwide in local search and send out this big long questionnaire. Last year's took about three hours to fill out. I heard this year's is gonna be worse, but we haven't done it yet. This still says 2015 because this came out in October of last year. 
Actually, next week we're doing the study for this year, so we're actually going to skip 2016. They're just going to go ahead and put 2017 on it since we're doing it basically at Thanksgiving. But you're aggregating all of the answers from the top 40 worldwide local search experts to get a really good handle on the signals that matter the most. And you get this nice pie chart every year. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm going to run you guys through the important signals in each part of the pie and show you exactly what matters and exactly how to optimize your sites. So starting with content, this is the biggest chunk of the pie at 20.3%. More than anything else, your content is the absolute most important. None of the other stuff with SEO matters if you've got crappy content on your site. And it's all about the quality of your content, not the quantity. Remember that, it's hugely important. So stop pushing out all the crappy content. The only people worse than car dealers for pushing out crappy content on their site is personal injury attorneys, and you guys don't want to be associated with those guys. So stop doing it. And stop trying to do all the little tricky things that are going to fool the nerds at Google, because you can't fool those guys. They're way smarter than everybody else put together. It's got to be unique content. It's got to be useful. We talk to dealers all the time. They're like, my content's awesome. Check it out. And they say stuff like this. Also, this is completely off topic, but OK, THX1138, Super awesome George Lucas, right? And he also did American Graffiti. Notice the license plate. THX138, super cool, right? I'm a movie nerd, sorry. Anyway, so we talk to dealers, and they're like, oh, our content's awesome, look, check it out. And the big thing they push on their homepage, we treat our customers like family. I'm not gonna be interactive here because I don't wanna embarrass you guys, but I guarantee you there's at least five or six people in the room that have that on their site. That's not unique, that's not helpful. Or what about, we're family owned, guarantee you a ton of people in here have that on their site. You know what? Who gives a crap? We've got no haggle pricing or we've got upfront pricing. So does everyone else in your market. Customers expect this stuff. This is not optimization. This is expected from your customers and it's not unique if everybody else in your market has the same thing on their site. Or this is great. We've got a state of the art showroom. Cool, because the alternative is you're selling beat up Kias out behind 7-Eleven, right? Everybody expects this. Everybody's got a cool kick-ass showroom. Don't be like everybody else in your market. If you're always chasing your competitors, you will never be better than second best. You guys don't want to be second best. You're at this conference because you want to dominate your market. You have to be unique. So the most important question to ask, this is the most important question or the most important slide in the entire deck. I ask this to everyone that I work with, both in automotive and outside of automotive. Everybody thinks they're the best at what they do and they should always be better than their competitors. But there's only one person that's going to show up as number one. You have to answer the question, why do you deserve to be number one? What do you do at your dealership that makes it clear that you are far and away the best choice for the number one search result in your area? When you answer that question with true, honest answers, then it's really easy to write the awesome content you need to write. And then once you write that content, here's how you optimize it. You've got to have your location information in your title tag. Remember, this is the most important element. You've got to have that location signal there. You've also got to have it in the H1 heading. That's the big, thick headline at the top of the page. Depending on what provider you use, you may not have an H1 heading. So check with your IT team or your SEO guy and see if you've got it. You can add it in manually if you don't have it, but you've got to have that location information in there as well. Also, in the actual content of the page, don't forget to mention your location. Also, put it in the alt text on your images. As far as we know, Google cannot yet interpret exactly what's in an image. So you've got alt text, which goes in the embed code that says put this image here on the page, that explains what's in that image. It's a great place to push additional local content signals. Then put it in your URL. So for dealers that we work with, instead of dealership.com slash search used.aspx, why not dealership.com slash used cars Lexington, Kentucky? Much more powerful. Super important if you guys are writing this down and you want to go home and try this, if your system lets you change URLs, you've got to set up a 301 redirect so that you don't lose the value of any links that were pointed to that page. I'm glossing over that really fast. Come talk to me later. I will be happy to explain that to you. Meta descriptions, also incredibly important. Remember that populates those two gray sentences underneath your blue link. This does not play in the ranking algorithm. This will not be something that will help you rank better, but it will help you get more clicks if it's well written. You got to have your name, address, phone number on every page of your website. Don't make people look for your phone number. Put it at the top of the damn page, every page of the site. You need an embedded Google Map, not a photo of a Google Map, an actual live Google Map embed. It has to be on the home page. If you've got a group site, you need an embedded Google Map on the location page for each individual dealership. You also absolutely have to have a local phone number. And I know a lot of people are going, wait, what? It has to be a local area code phone number on your site. 
It's ridiculously important for SEO. And yes, that means call tracking is very, very, very bad for SEO, unfortunately. We all wanna track calls. We, I haven't had a, a conversation at this conference this week. We would love to be able to do call tracking for all of our customers. Unfortunately, Google doesn't give a crap and we can't change the way that Google works. So we have to play within Google's rules. So I always do this exercise. I'm not gonna do it today because we don't have time, but most of the time, everybody that does call tracking, they just do it because they've always done it or they do it because they really just want the recordings. But the vast majority of people that do call tracking don't even look at their monthly reports and the ones that do look at the monthly reports don't even change their marketing spend based on what's in those reports. So what would you rather have? A report with a bunch of data that you don't really use or would you rather do your SEO correctly and get more leads? Because we're all here to get more leads, right? So if you have no choice, like Audi dealerships, Audi says, here's your group of call tracking numbers. You must use these, you have no choice. If that's the case, you can put a local number on the page too and put your schema markup on that local number. So you still have the 800 number to satisfy your manufacturer, but you got your local number to satisfy Google. Super important. And if you have a choice, maybe you have a choice. You're not forced to do it, but your dealership or your group says we wanna do call tracking. There's only one way to do it correctly and not screw up your SEO. So there's three requirements you have to satisfy. Requirement number one, it has to be a local number. You do not need an 800 number ever. Everybody has cell phones, they call for free. So get a local area code tracking number, make sure it's a tracking number that you own. So if you switch tracking providers, you can take that number with you. And instead of using 50 different numbers on every stinking website out there, you use that same number everywhere because you're gonna have call tracking or you're gonna have call recordings and there will be attributions on those call recordings because somebody's gonna say, I'm calling about the truck that I'm looking at on your website, boom, website. Or I'm calling about the truck that I'm looking at on AutoTrader, boom. Auto Trader. As soon as it's mentioned in the call, it makes it into attribution and it's very easy to train your staff to ask people where they're calling from. That's the only way you can do it and not screw up your SEO. You also have to have a blog. It is no longer a luxury. You've got to have a blog. You've got to blog on a regular basis. Stick to a calendar. You need to write about things that people actually care about. Don't go to Car and Driver and copy the article about the new F-150 and put it on your site. And you're like, yeah, we got the new F-150. Check it out. Because nobody cares. People will not read that. You've got to write about stuff that people care about, interesting, cool things. And then once you do it, don't forget the marketing part of content marketing. I talk to dealers all the time that have an amazing blog and nobody reads it because it's buried like the 13th thing down under about us on their menu and they never share links on social media. You should share the crap out of every post that you write multiple times on social media so that people will see it. Make your blog a local destination. For all of our clients, half the blog posts that we write are about the local area and have nothing to do with the dealership. Be a local destination. Write about stuff in the community that people care about. Again, you can get ideas here, bit.ly slash local dash content dash ideas. And this is a very advanced level tip I don't have time to go into, but it, it's very, very exceedingly hard to show up well in a city that you do not have a physical address in. This is a strategy in local SEO that humble brag I invented. So you can go read about it here, bit.ly slash local dash content dash silos. This takes a long time, it is very intensive, it's very complicated, but this will help you show up in searches in other cities where you're not located. Moving on to links, 20.0% of local search ranking factor studies. Like I mentioned before, it's not a numbers game anymore. Now it matters where those links come from. So the guys doing regular SEO are really scared of link building. If they do it at all, they're only gonna go after like edu sites or .gov sites. They want the really powerful, awesome websites that carry a lot of value. But here's a pro tip for you guys. I like what we call crappy little church websites. You get links from churches or little league teams or peewee hockey teams or local daycares or neighborhood watch groups. These sites, if you run them through a traditional SEO tool, says that site doesn't have much authority, but the thing is those sites are so hyper-local, it carries a ton of relevancy in Google's rankings. So go get those local links and take advantage of things that you guys are already doing. People at the dealership have been in your town for a long time. They've got friends. You probably have somebody that plays golf with the mayor or somebody that knows somebody on city council, or you're working with other businesses in town on different charity organizations and groups. Take advantage of those relationships and figure out how you can mine the relationships that already exist and get some good links from other local businesses. And again, you're doing things in the community too. I can't tell you how many dealerships I talk to that are so involved in their community and they don't take the extra step to get a link from all those charity events and time donations that they're providing to the community. If you need more ideas for local links, again, search engine land article, bit.ly slash local dash link dash ideas. Tons of ideas that will help you guys get local links. The really cool thing about this is your competitors will not be able to reverse engineer this because when they go check your links to see if that's why you're kicking their ass in Google, 
they're going to see all these crappy church links, and they're going to be like, well, it's obviously not this, and they're going to move on. So it's kind of foolproof. Now, you can use a tool called Open Site Explorer from Moz. You enter in your URL, and it spits out a list of all the links that are pointed to your website. Really good for link research. It's 99 bucks a month to join Moz at the pro level to get this tool. Now, the really cool thing is you can also put your competitors in to see what sites are linking to your competitors because all you have to do is put in a URL. But if you're going to do that, you don't want to just go after the links that your competitors have. It's a good tactic at the beginning because it's low-hanging fruit. If they link to your competitor, they're probably going to link to you too. But the problem is you need unique links. So if all you're doing is getting the same thing your competitor has, doesn't help you that much. But you do want to go after them because as soon as you now have a link from that site, it's no longer a unique link for your competitor. So it kind of brings them down in value for your competitor. And also, don't point all the links that you get to the home page of your site. You want your service page to rank better? Get some links pointed at it. You want your parts page to rank better? Get links pointed at it. You want your used car page to rank better? Get more links pointed at it. Moving on, Google My Business, 14.7%, but with stars. That number's gonna go down in this year's study because the user journey on Google has changed. People do not go to your Google Places page anymore. In fact, if I put a computer up here and turn it around and put it live, I bet nobody in here could even find their Google Places page without logging into your account first. Customers, the general public, they don't go to those pages anymore. This is what it used to look like. Review information, description, you guys may not know this, Google's actually taken away the ability to edit your description. It pulls your description automatically now off of different multiple sources. But you got all the review stuff and your photos and your cover photo and all the great stuff. But there's a beta button you can see what the new listing is going to look like. And it looks like this. It's just a heading for a social feed. All the location information is pulled. Because nobody goes there anymore. Your location information shows up when people do a brand search. So people do the brand search. And this is where all that information shows up now. Or if somebody searches on maps, they'll see it over on the left side. So because of that, your actual Google Places or Google My Business page doesn't have as much value as it used to. But it's still important to claim your location, because if you don't claim your location, you're not going to show up if somebody searches for you in Maps. And if you have problems getting into your listing, this happens all the time because it's like your last internet manager is the guy that claimed your listing, and you fired him, and he's like, F you guys, I'm never talking to you again. And you need to get in to reply to reviews, but you can't because he's gone. You're kind of screwed. But you can use Google phone support to get back in, because you guys actually own the listing at the dealership level. So bit.ly slash Google dash phone dash support will take you to the article that I wrote that walks you through the form to fill out. But I have not used this in three months because they now have Twitter support, and Twitter support's even better and faster. So even if you don't really use Twitter all the time, just go start a Twitter account and then tweet at Google My Biz, and they'll get back to you really quick. And most of the time, we've had stuff fixed within five minutes. So it's really awesome if you're having issues there. You absolutely have to have a local number listed in Google. You can list multiple numbers. Your primary initial first number has to be a local area code. It's incredibly important to the algorithm. And it's really important that it matches the local phone number that's also displayed on the page on your site that you're linking to, which will typically be your home page. You've got to use your correct business name. Don't try to stuff keywords. Moving on to citation signals, I've got just a few minutes left, so I'm going to go really fast. 13.6%. Citations are like your online ID. It's like your directory sites. It's any time that your name, address, phone number are mentioned on other websites. Most dealers don't do anything with them. Most automotive SEO vendors don't do anything with them. And that's a shame because most dealers have a really ugly citation profile. Your dealership has probably moved to a shiny new showroom at some point in the last few years. Or you've probably changed phone numbers in the last few years. Or maybe you got bought and you changed names of the dealership in the last few years. If any of that stuff has happened, the most important thing you can do is to go clean that information up so that there are no mismatched bits of information out in the ecosystem. Now, citations aren't as important as they used to be. We kind of call them the ante for the poker game. You've got to get your citations right to sit at the big boy SEO poker game. It's not anything that's going to be a big game changer for you, but if you've got them wrong, they're definitely going to hurt you. And they need to be 100% consistent, and here's why. Your citations play together like this. This is the ecosystem. You've got the five major thick lines that are the major data feeds that feed down into the second tier, that feed down into the third tier. So if you've got a third tier site that's getting conflicting information from sites that are further upstream, it doesn't know what to show. And then everything goes back and compares to Google. So if Google sees all this conflicting information, that's a big negative for you. So you've got to be where Google expects you to be. I'm pulling this number out of the air for the sake of demonstration. It doesn't mean it's really this number. But let's say there are 50 sites that you guys should be listed on because you're a car dealer in the city that you're in. But you're only on 30 of them, but your competitors are on all 50. Then you're not, you're not doing your ante correctly, and you're not going to win the game. 
You've got to be where Google expects you to be. If you've got incorrect, incomplete, or duplicate information, that sends a bad signal to Google. And here's my favorite story. You guys heard this last year if you were here. This guy has since retired and sold his dealership, but he was in Metairie, Louisiana, suburb of Louisiana, or a suburb of New Orleans. This is the correct spelling of his name. I guess the apostrophe capital N is a crazy Cajun thing. But the problem is, those other ones there are the number of ways that he misspelled his own dealership name on his own website. And his citations were all over the board, and a significant number of the citations on the directory sites were actually the phonetic spelling of the name. So month one, all we did, we fixed the spelling of his dealership name both on his site and off his site. In 30 days, he went from not showing up at all to being the number two organic result and the number one map pack result in any searches in his city for any keywords he wanted to rank for. That's how important citations are. So you can check your top 15 citation sources with a free tool from Moz. Moz.com slash local slash search. You put in the name of your dealership and your zip code. It's going to spit out a list of possible matches. You want to see one possible match. That means you don't have any problems. If you're like this guy and you've got 18, that means you have a massive citation problem that needs to be fixed. Three minutes left. Boom. We're going to go fast. The really cool thing is this is free. Once you click on one of these listings, it takes you over to this. Once you're here, you click on one of those bars, it jumps you directly to that listing so you can go get it fixed. If it's green, that's good. If it's red, that means incomplete or inconsistent. If it's yellow, that's duplicate. That's the worst possible thing that can happen. So go get that fixed. Then when you want to get more advanced, there's a tool called WhiteSpark. It's 20 bucks a month. It will find every citation in existence for your dealership. Super, super awesome. So you can get that at bit.ly slash local dash citation dash finder. Really quickly through review signals, I've got a two and a half minutes left. 88% of people now trust an online review from a stranger equally to something they hear from friends or family, and four out of five people will not buy from your dealership if you've got bad reviews. You cannot fake good reviews, and you cannot fake caring about your customers. I have turned down SEO business of dealers that have called us and said, I need help, do my SEO. I go look at their reviews, and I can tell that they're a shady mofo. No amount of SEO is going to help you if you treat your customers like crap. You have to care about your customers. You got to make it easy for people to leave a review and you got to ask them to leave a review. You can't ask for Yelp reviews because that's against Yelp's terms of service. It'll get you in trouble with Yelp, but you can't ignore it because if somebody searches for you on an Apple phone, the stars that show up on Apple Maps come from Yelp, not from Google. So you don't want to be in a situation like this where you've got a great Google score and somebody looks you up on your phone and you've got two stars on Yelp. How much business will you lose when those people see that? So we use a review survey system like Get Five Stars that will ask people how we did today and ask them a single question and rate on a scale of one to 10. The low reviews go to a private form that lets them rant and rave that emails to you. The high reviews will then take them to a page that says, please go leave this review publicly on one of these sites. That will help you get more positive reviews and it will reduce your public negative reviews. You want to care more about Google reviews than anything else because they help you rank better. Make sure you get more reviews than any of your competitors, but you don't want to get too many more. If you've got like five times as many reviews, people are going to think that you're faking it even if you're not. And don't fake reviews. Really quickly here. This guy Chuck said, great place to buy a car. See Chuck. It's against Google's rules to review the place of business where you work. That, that sales guy right there could have got the entire Google Places page banned from Google. And the second one there, they decided to spiff their sales team 50 bucks for every review that showed up online that mentioned the sales guy by name. So what the sales guys do? Cutching, free money. They just started faking reviews. So this guy came in to buy a car and had a crappy experience. Stewed about it all weekend, went in on Monday, saw a fake review, and then he left a review that says, hey, they're posting fake posts under my name. It was the worst thing in my life to ever deal with this dealership. Again, SEO is not going to help you if you're a shady mofo. So reply to every negative review. Make sure your replies are well written. Don't be like this and put the same reply up to every review and just change the person's name. That is not valuable. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that crazy ride today. And now when you're thinking about SEO, it's not going to make you want to drive off a cliff. If you use all the tips that I gave you today, it's going to help you win the race to the top of Google search results. Boom. I did it. And I did it in time. I told you I could do it. There's my Twitter handle. If you guys, if you guys use Twitter at all, follow me on Twitter. When I go to conferences, I live tweet. So it's a great source of free tips for SEO. Email me if you have questions about anything. I'd be happy to help. Again, download the slides, bit.ly slash kane seo 2016. And as I always do, if you guys download the list, there is a list, or download the slides, there's a list of all the movies in order of release at the end of the slide deck. So thank you. I told you I could do it.